Hello, Anna. Thank you for providing this platform for us to express our feelings about the current situation we are in. I'm Sheila from West Yorkshire, and I'll be 64 in November. I've been a yoga teacher for the past 11 years. My classes had to stop since the lockdown, and I've lost a source of income which is not being compensated for as I don't fit in the criteria to make a claim. I've paid my taxes and I cannot get help and it's just not good enough. It's taken me a long time to build this business to where I had it and now it's gone. And most of my clients were of the older age group. Under the general rules, it is virtually impossible now to run the classes cost-effectively. Now, when the news of the virus first broke out in China, I didn't give it much thought, thinking that it will pass, as they usually do. And as the weeks went by, and the panic set in, especially when Ferguson produced his figures, I was alarmed, but I didn't believe that it could get so serious. I watched the briefings for a couple of weeks and then got tired of them, especially when I couldn't make any sense of the lockdown, which I believed would cause an economic collapse. I questioned where all the money would come from, you know, how people would live without an income. How can the government continue to pay people just to stay at home and do nothing? It just didn't make sense to me. And I understand that the virus was downgraded just before the lockdown came into effect. And I couldn't see the sense in this lockdown. I thought the sensible thing would be to isolate the vulnerable people and let the others carry on, like what Sweden did. But the shocking and fearful news came from Italy. And then the appalling deaths in the UK started to hit the news. Then it came to pass that the deaths were people in a certain age group, mainly the older people, and people with comorbidities, and those who had been put on ventilators. I remember uh, the mass panic, the scramble for ventilators worldwide. In the early days of the lockdown, when I went shopping, I did use a face cover and gloves. And I did this a couple of times, and then I abandoned it because I thought, well, I'm healthy and fit, I have a strong immune system, and it's there to protect me, so why should I need to wear mask and gloves? And since then, other than accompanying my vulnerable husband to hospital because he has cancer, I don't wear a mask. And then as the times when went on, as time went on, I just grew more and more skeptical about the whole situation. And I stopped watching mainstream media. I mean, I, I wasn't really into watching TV and the news. I don't watch it as a rule. And I found more information on YouTube that made sense to me. It wasn't just one person's point of view, but several people from different parts of the world. And the more I heard, I learned, and the more skeptical I became. The people I follow are Dr. Vernon Coleman, he's very good, the Corbett Report, the Dollar Vigilante, David Icke from London Real, Simon Dolan, and a few more. But sadly, my husband and some of my friends don't share my point of view. I am shocked and saddened that so many people have been so brainwashed by this fear that has been put out by the government and mainstream media. I feel so sorry for the elderly and the children walking around in the heat with face covers. I have now joined a group on Facebook called CV19-Facts Not Fear Leaflet Campaign and I've just ordered 300 leaflets which I intend to distribute to people in my village. I'm also a member of a telegram group of like-minded people. Yesterday, I was 
shocked to learn that Dr. Mohammed Iqbal Adil, a surgeon with the NHS who had an exemplary record, was struck off for his criticism on social media of the handling of the virus. I am shocked by the censorship of facts that's going on around us on social media. I just cannot understand why there's no opportunity for debate about the situation on mainstream media. What bugs me as well is that the government is so reluctant to promote healthy eating to reverse the metabolic disease that the bulk of the population is facing today. It has been shown that the current dietary guidelines, which has been in place for the last, I don't know, four decades or so, is a carbohydrate heavy, low fat diet, and it's not working for the people. Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock are following a low carb diet, but they seem to selfishly not want to promote it. I changed this way of eating in September last year, and since 1st of March, I hardly eat any carbs at all. And I feel that to not encourage and promote this change in diet is really irresponsible of the government. And I wonder what their, their motive is for not wanting to do this. They keep pushing the vaccine agenda and create a false hope, I believe, 